In today's episode, we'll be diving deep into the fascinating history of the rotary engine. We'll explore the latest advancements in the field and discuss why we could soon see these engines in our cars. Believe it or not, production has already started, so this is going to be an exciting journey. Let's get started! The story of the rotary piston engine dates back to the First World War, when aviation pioneers started using clergy engines, later refined by Bentley. These air-cooled engines featured an odd number of cylinders, ranging from 7 to 11, each operating on a four-stroke cycle. The entire cylinder block revolved around the crankshaft, propelling it into motion. The most powerful 11-cylinder version could generate an impressive 200 horsepower. Although these engines were relatively lightweight and simple in design, they had a high oil consumption rate and other drawbacks, like oil leakage risks. In aviation, they also produced a gyroscopic effect, but despite these shortcomings, they performed quite well for their time. Fast forward a bit, and we meet Felix Wonkel, a German engineer who developed the now famous Wonkel engine, featuring a triangular rotor. Thanks to the NSU company, which bought the license, the engine underwent further refinements and started to be mass produced. It found applications in chainsaws, motorcycles, and eventually automobiles. Some NSU Wonkel rotor versions were tested at over 20,000 RPM but the rotor started to deform due to centrifugal forces. The first car to feature this engine was the NSU Spider, boasting a rear-mounted half-liter engine that produced 54 horsepower. Remarkable for the 1960s, the car weighed just 700 kilograms. However, despite its promising features, the Wonkel engine has a recurring issue with rotor tip seals. These seals often failed before the car could even reach 50,000 km, leading to warranty headaches that eventually brought down the company. Anasu continued to address these engine problems even after the warranty period, a factor that contributed to its acquisition by Audi. Many companies saw great potential in Wonka's rotary design, including Mercedes, Citroën, General Motors and even Lada. However, Mazda took it a step further. While collaborating with NSU, Mazda invested heavily in developing the unique engine type. Even after NSU's bankruptcy, Mazda continued to work independently to address the engine's issues, significantly improve its durability and environmental performance. This led to the creation of iconic vehicles like the Mazda RX-7 and RX-8. Much like the piston engine in most of our cars, Wonkel's rotor engine operates on a four-stroke cycle. But instead of using a piston with reciprocating motion, it employs a triangular rotor. This rotor sits on an eccentric shaft, tracing an intriguing path, known as an epitrochoid, a movement pattern also likened to the motion of the Moon around the Sun. The operating cycle begins with the intake phase, where air and fuel are drawn in. As the rotor spins, the combustion chamber's volume decreases, leading to compression followed by the power stroke involving ignition and expansion. Finally, the exhaust phase occurs as waste gases are expelled. One advantage of this design is fewer moving parts, eliminating the need for reciprocating motions and consequently reducing vibrations. This allows for higher RPMs. However, the challenge of improving rotor tip seals remains, and this has historically led to issues like increased oil consumption, diminished compression, and reduced lifespan. Mazda has largely learned to mitigate these challenges, but the rapid tightening of environmental regulations outpaced their rotary engine's development. As a result, Mazda put a pause on rotary engine production in 2012. But the good news is that in 2023 they resumed production with an improved rotary engine design. Currently they are focusing on developing two vehicles versions, one for the Mazda MX-30 for everyday use and another high-performance variant, the concept of which has already been unveiled. An increasing number of patents are appearing for its layout, making it an exciting time for rotary engine enthusiasts. 
As for Mazda's first vehicle equipped with a new one-call rotary engine, the MX-30 Arif is a hybrid, with the updated rotary engine served as a generator. Unlike traditional rotary engines that often employ two rotor sections with a 1.3-liter displacement, this new hybrid version features just a single rotor section with a mere 0.8-liter capacity, generating 74 horsepower at 4,500 rpm. Despite its smaller size, the engine is designed for increased efficiency, better reliability and reduced fuel consumption. Mazda has made some interesting tweaks to address these goals. For instance, fuel is now directly injected into the combustion chamber, not the intake, as in older models. This change arose from the realization that injecting fuel into the intake led to some fuel being misdirected into the exhaust, resulting in unburned fuel escaping through the tailpipe and consequently higher fuel consumption. The new engine also incorporates a revamped exhaust gas recirculation system to enhance low-end torque. The engine block is now made of aluminum, reducing its weight further. The walls are coated with ceramic material to minimize gaps and friction. Thicker seals are also employed at the rotor tips for longer durability. As for the electric motor, it's directly connected to the eccentric shaft of the rotary engine, eliminating the need for additional complex. This electric motor serves dual roles. It acts as a starter and also helps the rotary engine quickly reach optimal RPM, enhancing overall efficiency. Once the ideal RPM is reached, the electric motor operates at a fixed speed, functioning as a generator. Most impressively, this very compact and lightweight internal combustion engine is seamlessly integrated with electric motors on the same axis. This layout has no adverse effect on the system's design or interior space, maintaining the benefits on the fully electric version. You can use this car as an electric vehicle while a range of about 85 km on a single charge, sufficient for city driving. Additionally, the incredibly compact and lightweight rotary engine generator can kick in as needed. The company claims that long-distance fuel consumption will be just 1 liter per 100 km. Production of these groundbreaking rotary engines has already commenced, and sales are expected to start soon. The second anticipated vehicle is the sporty version of the Mazda RX. Mazda has repeatedly announced in recent years that they are planning to revive the rotary engine specifically for use in sports cars. And few years ago we saw a glimpse of this vision in a concept car, and now a series of patterns have surfaced, revealing the layout of coupe that closely resembles the Mazda RX Vision concept. According to the patent descriptions, the vehicle will employ a three-section rotary engine, likely boasting a total displacement of 2.4 liters and generating over 300 horsepower. Positioned behind the rotor, there is a 36 horsepower electric motor that seems to serve a similar role as in the MX-30. It acts as a starter, a generator and fills in tour gaps at low RPMs. All of this power is transferred to the rear axle via drift shaft. Up front, two more electric motors are evident, one at each wheel, each delivering 23 horsepower. These motors not only add power but also enable energy recovery during braking. Another intriguing detail from the patterns is the use of dual battery packs, which can operate at either 48 volts or 96 volts, depending on the load. This flexible setup reportedly helps to significantly reduce weight. With this kind of innovative engineering, there is a strong chance that Mazda will once again create an iconic sport car powered by a rotary engine, and perhaps even surpass existing benchmarks. So, what are your thoughts on this? Feel free to drop a comment below and don't forget to like this video. Have a great day, guys!